Okay, now we are going to do vector additions using the second method known as tip to tail. Okay, the previous video that I have, I have a video on vector addition using parallelogram method. This will be the second method. Both method that is uh, in in the exam that the the, the, the student the, the marker will not or the questions will actually will not detect which method to use. So it's up to students to use which method uh, the students prefer lah. Okay, so uh, I will go ahead in this video to outline the second method. Okay, if you need the first method, parallelogram method, refer to my previous video. Okay, for vector additions, okay, I will use back the same question using tip to tail. Okay, but before I go on, uh, a brief under, uh, a brief outline of this method, vector addition tip to tail. The essence of tip to tail method is actually tip of the first force touching the tail of the second force. So when we say tip to tail, we are actually referring to actually two different forces. The tip of the first force must touch the tail of the second force so what we are actually essentially creating is actually a line a straight uh, a lines uh, using different forces okay touching at different location and that location is actually the tip of one tail touching the head uh, tip of one force touching the tail of the other force okay we will go into details about this okay but the essence is tip of first force one must touch the tip of the second force okay Questions that we have is the same, okay. I have a 40 Newton and 50 Newton, span apart by 50 degree. The question usually will ask you to find the resultant force, okay, using any method that you want. Okay, for now, we'll do tip to tail. Huh? Now, I rewrote the question here at the side for easy references. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to use tip to tail. Same as before, okay, I will need to use a scale. So let's say I do a scale of let's say uh, one newton is sorry one cm is to five newton. Okay. So when I have one cm to five newton, uh, so whichever force you want, okay, you can choose either one of the force. Any any force, okay, it can be fifty twenty, it can be forty, whichever actually the student prefer or you prefer. So let's say I start with uh, forty newton. Okay, forty newton you get slanted. Okay, you can just slant in any direction. Okay, so let's say I do the starting point here. Okay, for the 40 Newton, it will be roughly 8 C, it will be 8 cm. So let's say I have 8 cm. Okay, 8 cm. Same as the previous method, whatever you see, you copy down. So I have the arrow, we represent the first vector, first force. Labeling 40 Newton, please write the labeling. Okay, uh, I'll write the bracket one, okay, just to remind. Students, okay, or to remind yourself, this is ACM. Huh? But in your answer, okay, do not try not to write the ACM. You must label the blue color. Why we see the monkey see, monkey do. Huh? Question give you 40 Newton. Okay, you have to give a 40 Newton. Okay, so now what you do is this is the first force. The tip of the first force refer to this. Okay. The tail of the second force. Okay, the tail of the second force, which means the tail of the second force, which is here. Okay, he this tail, this location must touch the tip here. So what you are going to do is you are going to shift the second force, okay, in a direction such that the tail of the force, the tip, the tail, the tip of the tail of the force, actually touch the tip of this particular force. But remember, when you are shifting, the orientation should not change, okay. Okay, so let's uh, do a representation. So I use this cap to represent twenty newton force, okay. So remember, when you shift this force. You can shift it anywhere, but remember the orientation cannot change. You cannot like shift it up or down or uh, diagonally. You can rotate. You cannot do. Okay, you cannot rotate it. You have to shift it any direction such that the tip of the force here, the tip of the force, touches. Eh, sorry, the tail of this force touches the tip of the first force. Okay, that's what we call tip to tail. Okay, so let's say it's here. Huh? I will touch, shift it such that the tail. Touches the tip of the force, so the like, twenty newton must appear here in the same orientation. Okay, so I actually shift it up. Okay, and remember when I shift it, the orientation must remain the same, which means that okay, forty newton is fifty degree apart from twenty newton. So which means you take a look. I mean, if I do a rough count, so let's say if I do this, my twenty newton here, the angle between twenty newton and forty degree should be. Uh, between 20 newton, the angle between 20 newton and 40 newton should be actually still remaining as 50 degree, which means that the angle between them here, the obtuse angle between here, 
would be 130 degree. Okay, because angle on the straight line, which is 130, 180 degree. Okay, so what you do is at the tip of this force, okay, I will measure 130 degree, okay, which is under here. 130 degree here. Okay, this is where my second force is. Okay, or what we call the first force and the second force, the angle between them is 50 Newton. Remember, when you shift the second force, the orientation must remain the same. Okay, 40 Newton and 50, 20 Newton, the diff angle between them must still remain as 50, uh, 50 degree. Okay, so 20 Newton, I will have will be 20 Newton in 5 cm scale, which is 4 cm. So, 4 cm in this orientation. So, 4 cm will be here. Okay, so this will be my 20 Newton. Okay, angle between them here, it still remains at 50 degree. Okay, same as the question. Or I can actually say that the angle between 20 Newton and 40 Newton is actually 130 degree. Okay, remember 130, 50 degree angle on a straight line, you should add up to 180 degree. So a little bit of geometry. So this is what we mean by tip to tail. Tip of the first force touches the tail of the second force. Okay, orientation is fixed. Then after that, what we do is now, at the start point and end point, what you're going to do is you're just going to draw a straight line from the start point to the end point. Start point to the end point, which means the arrow will actually be in this direction. It's always start to end. So this will symbolize or detects the direction start to end. Same thing, this line which is the resultant force, which you must label it as resultant force. Okay, then what you are going to do is now you are going to actually write the answer. Okay, so usually you have the space resultant force. Same as the previous uh, method, your resultant force, what is the magnitude, how big your resultant force actually comes from the drawing. So you actually need to go and measure. So for this, let's say I do a rough measurements, okay, it will be 10.9, okay. So if it's 10.9 cm, 1 cm is 5 newton, okay, so 10.9 cm, okay, it will simply give you the same, which is 54.5 newton, okay. So resultant force is actually 54.5 newton, but same as before, you need the angles because vectors come in magnitude and direction so I will need to have the angle angle depends on the question it can s simply asking for maybe resultant force the angle between the resultant force and the 40 newton resultant force and 40 newton meaning I need this angle okay so let's say a resultant force between 40 newton uh, I will label it as angle B okay so I label this as angle B so angle B what you are lo looking for okay angle B so angle B, okay, which is the angle between respect to FR resultant force and 40 Newton. Okay, the red one you don't need to write also. Huh? So angle B, how to measure angle B? How do you get the size of uh, angle B? Same thing, take a protractor and measure. Okay, so I get a protractor and measure. Okay, angle B will be roughly 17 degree. Okay, sometimes I may not want this angle. Sometimes the questions may detail say I want the angle between the RF resultant force and the 20 Newton. So this will be the angle between them, RF and 20 Newton. So let's say this angle A. Okay, so angle A, same thing. I want angle A. Okay, so angle A here will be between 20 Newton and FR. Okay, so how to get angle A? Okay, how to get angle A? Same thing, measure. Okay, angle A. Okay, if I measure this, okay, you'll find that the angle will roughly based on my drawing. It will be 30, 30, 31. Around my 34 degree. Okay. 34 degree okay so this will be around 34 degree okay so this will be the answer that you want so the answer that 
you are looking for is the magnitude and either one of these either one of these okay so if you look at vector additions for uh, using uh, tip to tail this is the whole working unit okay remember vector additions you can start with any of the force okay the difficulty about this question is that you have to orientate the second force such that the tip of the first force touches tip of the first force touches the tip of the second force then after that you need to find the angle between them usually or most of the time you have to be careful of the angle you take a look I am 50 degree here but after when I draw the angle here this angle may or may not be 50 degree okay you have to look at the mathematics look at the geometry but one thing for sure is that the angle between 40 Newton and the angle between 20 Newton here okay 20 Newton the angle between them here it has to remain as 50 degrees so th this orientation based on the questions this orientation cannot change so because of this you'll find that the obtuse angle between them will be 130 degrees which is what you want for the drawing here okay so for tip to tail the only like I mentioned before the problem lies in getting the angle correct okay other than that okay the the, the method of using is actually quite uh, easy uh, Vector additions, if you're using parallelogram method or vector tip to tail, at O level, both methods are actually equally as good as the other. The questions will not detail which method uh, you are using. But of course, at higher level, you'll find that most of us will actually prefer using tip to tail because tip to tail essentially allows you to add more than two forces at one shot. I can add uh, three forces, four forces at, at one shot. The only, the only condition is that tip of one force must touch the tail of the other force so in the sense that you will have multiple forces touching each other okay so if you, if you have let's say uh, multiple forces you are looking at the drawing let's say it could be like one force the tip touching the tail of another force then maybe the tip touch the third force which is the tail the tip touch the tail of the third force the tip touch the tail of the sec uh, fourth force so eventually you have a series of force touching each other which fulfill the condition of tip of one force touching the tail of the other force after that you can add them together you okay, be having the resultant force resultant vectors okay, this is the advantage of using tip to tail you can actually literally add many force at one shot but for parallelogram method because of the method itself of the force of the figure the parallelogram you are constrained with the fact that you have to add two forces each, each time only so two forces you add here, you can only add two forces at one go only. So it's a bit a bit uh, troublesome if you go up higher level when you're dealing with more forces. But like I re repeat again, like I mentioned before, at O level both forces, both method, tip to tail or vector additions are actually uh, as good as each other. Okay, the questions were not detailed. Okay, it's the students is how is whether the students are accurate or is the students is as efficient as in, in any method. Okay, with that I hope it's actually easier for you. And uh, after the video, okay, please spend some time on the questions that you have using your tutorial or your worksheets and try. Okay, the important is to try to get a hang of using it and drawing the answers. It looks easy, but it is not. Okay, so all the best, gentlemen. Bye bye.